Hey y'all, so I want to talk about some more syntax stuff. So we have this idea in syntax called autonomy syntax, where we are separating meaning from the structure. In other words, we are saying we can build grammatical sentences without looking at the meaning of the words that we are building those sentences with. It's kind of a trippy topic, so stay with me. In order to talk about this, we need to talk about how we basically strip away meaning. Now, we don't strip it away completely. We don't say these are all words, words go together. That's not going to work because our goal is to predict only grammatical versions, grammatical ver phrases. We don't want to be able to predict anything ungrammatical. Everything that we predict and we build up in syntax should be grammatical and it should explain the grammatical stuff. It should prevent us from making ungrammatical sentences. So how do we do this? Well, so when we want to strip away meaning from for the purpose of syntax, we have to have some trace of what that word was, what that what that structure is going to look like. So for example, if we have a sentence, let's make a sentence. So the dog ate the natto. Now we can look at the sentence and we can we can understand the meaning. That's cool. Yeah, the dog ate the natto, whatever the heck natto is. Well, we we don't want that much meaning. We don't want to know like okay, dog, the dog ate something. We want we want to have a okay, well there was something, an entity here that did something to something else. You know, you see how you see what I mean? So, the way we're going to do it, we're, we're going to break these up into com into categories. Now, I'm not going to cover categories just because this is just some you just need to look at it. You just need to look at the PDF. I'll link it in the description. Just look at it, apply the test, you'll f you'll be able to find come up with categories. The main the main point I want to iterate is that these are not simple. I mean, you can use intuition if you are a native speaker, but to a certain degree, you will you may need tests to figure out some of these categories. So definitely check out the PDF if you're trying to identify categories. I'm just going to go ahead and label these. So if you want to take a pause and figure it out, that's good. You should definitely do that. Anyways, for the rest of us, we're going to just go ahead. So Nato is a noun. Now this is what's called a determiner. And determiners, these are kind of new to us, to most of us. They are things that precede nouns. Because in English, and most languages for that matter, you don't have a noun that exists by itself. You don't have something like dog ate the natto. That wouldn't be grammatical, unless dog was like a name. But it's we can't really make that assumption. Also, we don't care about um, meaning. And we'll get to a certain point where even names have determiners. So, this is going to be a determiner. And these are things like uh, the, it, he, his, her, those. those these are all determiners. You'll just get kind of get a feel for it as you work with them. You can also look at the tests. There's definitely things that you can do. You can run to check if things are the correct grammatical category. Now, it is a verb. And it is an action, but there are, of course, things that are verbs that are not actions. So, keep that in mind. Just if you're not sure, use the test. Dog is a noun. The determiner. So now we have the categories. So, to a, to a point, we don't really need these words so much. Now, for the purpose of our trees, we're still going to use them just because they're kind of helpful. But Let's start building a structure. So how do we build a structure? Well, we build a structure by an operation called merge. And merge.
charge basically tells us we can take any two elements and combine them. So we could do this with anything. We could say 8 natto and we can merge these two. We could say dog natto and merge these. But those aren't quite cor those aren't correct. Those aren't helpful. Why? Well, because they gr they give us gr ungrammatical sentences. We don't say do the dog ate natto. We say the dog ate the natto. So we need to be able to limit merge because merge is powerful. We need to limit merge so that it only it only produces grammatical thing sentence phrases sentences. Now one way is called the binarity principle. Binarity. Binarity mean by meaning two. So basically it just says you can only have two branches. Make sense? So we we can only do two. We cannot do three branches. This is a big no no. No no no, don't do that. The second thing is that we um what is the second thing? We have this thing called headedness, where we are gonna combine, and what the thing that's the head is gonna be is gonna reach what's called maximum projection. And it's a really confuse. It's it's a little confusing at the beginning, but bear with me. So, if we have like the natto, and we can we merge these, one of these elements. So this is a D. This is an N. One of these is going to go to this part, and this is called the maximum, maximum projection. That just means it's like the, the top of that tree. So which one is it? Well, it depends on the language, but in English, English is head initial. So the head, which is the beginning of that little like phrase, that's going to be the one that reaches maximum projection. So in this case, it would be a D and then a P determiner phrase. So that is how we would do our merge. So that is how we're going to constrain our merge. So this is a DP. Now, we don't really care about the details of this DP anymore. So now we have a verb and we have a DP. Now, if we want to do merge, we we would take these two, and we would make this the DP, or the a VP, because this is now the head of that phrase. So eight the natto, and then now we could we we have two options here. We could do dog ate the natto, but this dog ate the natto is not. A phrase is not a phrase, um, not a phrase, not a grammatical phrase. We can't have dog ate the natto because now we just have we we need we need the dog to be connected. So what we would do instead is make this a DP and then merge these two together as a last step to make. Well, to make a DP, I guess. This isn't quite correct, but for this pur for our purposes today, this is how we are going to think about it. In a future video, we will extend this, and we will ex see why we need to improve this definition. I hope that was clear. Let's do another example. So... The cat sat in the hat. So now we have an, a new, a new, we have a new category, which is this in. This is a preposition. This is a determiner, noun, verb, determiner, or determiner, and this is a noun. Okay, so let's let's build this up. So determiner and noun makes a DP. 
in is the preposition. So we can merge these to make a prepositional phrase. Sat in the in the hat. We can make this a verb phrase. Cat sat in the hat. That's not going to work because cat can't be by itself. We need to merge these two together first. So we're going to say this is a determiner phrase. And now this merges to be, for our purposes now, a determiner phrase. Again, we are going to change this later. So I'm going to put a little asterisk here just to mark that this is not correct. So this is kind of the basic idea of merging in syntax. And this is how we are building our structures. I hope this was clear. All right, get out of here.